Ripening is a sort of concoction, for we call it ripening when there is a concoction of the nutriment in fruit. And since concoction is a sort of perfecting, the process of ripening is perfect when the seeds and fruit are able to reproduce the fruit in which they are found. For in all other cases as well, this is what we mean by perfect. This is what ripening means when the word is applied to fruit. However, many other things that have undergone concoction are said to be ripe, the general character of the process being the same, though the word is applied by an extension of meaning. The reason for this extension is, as we explained before, that the various modes in which natural heat and cold perfect the matter they determine have not special names appropriated to them. In the case of boils and phlegm, and the like, the process of ripening is the concoction of the moisture in them by their natural heat, for only that which gets the better of matter can determine it. So everything that ripens is condensed from a spirituous into a watery state, and from a watery into an earthy state, and in general from being rare becomes dense. In this process the nature of the thing that is ripening incorporates some of the matter in itself, and some it rejects. So much for the definition of ripening. Rawness is its opposite, and is therefore an imperfect concoction of the nutriment in the fruit, namely, of the undetermined moisture. Consequently, a raw thing is either spirituous or watery, or contains both spirit and water. Ripening being a kind of perfecting, rawness will be an imperfect state. And this state is due to a lack of natural heat and its disproportion to the moisture that is undergoing the process of ripening. Nothing moist ripens without the admixture of some dry matter. Water alone of liquids does not thicken. This disproportion may be due either to defect of heat or to excess of the matter to be determined. Hence the juice of raw things is thin, cold rather than hot, and unfit for food or drink. Rawness, like ripening, is used to denote a variety of states. Thus the liquid and solid excreta and catars are called raw for the same reason. For in every case the word is applied to things because their heat has not got the mastery in them and compacted them. If we go further, brick is called raw, and so is milk, and many other things too, when they are such as to admit of being changed and compacted by heat, but have remained unaffected. Hence, while we speak of boiled water, we cannot speak of raw water, since it does not thicken. We have now defined ripening and rawness and assigned their causes. Boiling is, in general, a concoction by moist heat of the indeterminate matter contained in the moisture of the thing boiled, and the word is strictly applicable only to things boiled in the way of cooking. The indeterminate matter, as we said, will be either spirituous or watery. The cause of the concoction is the fire contained in the moisture, for what is cooked in the frying pan is broiled. It is the heat outside that affects it, and, as for the moisture in which it is contained, it dries this up and draws it into itself. But a thing that is being boiled behaves in the opposite way. The moisture contained in it is drawn out of it by the heat in the liquid outside. Hence boiled meats are drier than broiled, for in boiling things do not draw the moisture into themselves, since the external heat gets the better of the internal. If the internal heat had got the better, it would have drawn the moisture to itself. Not everybody admits of the process of boiling. If there is no moisture in it, it does not, for instance, stones nor does it if there is moisture in it, but the density of the body is too great for it to be mastered, as in the case of wood. But only those bodies can be boiled that contain moisture, which can be acted on by the heat contained in the liquid outside. It is true that gold and wood and many other things are said to be boiled, but this is a stretch of the meaning of the word, though the kind of thing intended is the same. The reason for the usage being that the various cases have no names appropriated to them. Liquids, too, like milk and must, are said to undergo a process of boiling when the external fire that surrounds and heats them changes the savor in the liquid into a given form, and the process being thus in a way like what we have called boiling. The end of the things that undergo boiling, or indeed any form of concoction, is not always the same. Some are meant to be eaten, some drunk, and some are intended for other uses. For instance, dyes, too, are said to be boiled. All those things then admit of boiling which can grow denser, smaller, or heavier, 
also those which do that with a part of themselves and with a part do the opposite, dividing in such a way that one portion thickens while the other grows thinner, like milk when it divides into whey and curd. Oil by itself is affected in none of these ways, and therefore cannot be said to admit of boiling. Such then is the species of concoction known as boiling, and the process is the same in an artificial and in a natural instrument, for the cause will be the same in every case. Imperfect boiling is the form of inconcoction opposed to boiling. Now the opposite of boiling properly, so-called, is an inconcoction of the undetermined matter in a body due to lack of heat in the surrounding liquid. Lack of heat implies, as we have pointed out, the presence of cold. The motion which causes imperfect boiling is different from that which causes boiling, for the heat which operates the concoction is driven out. The lack of heat is due either to the amount of cold in the liquid through the quantity of moisture in the object undergoing the process of boiling. Where either of these conditions is realized, the heat in the surrounding liquid is too great to have no effect at all, but too small to carry out the process of concocting uniformly and thoroughly. Hence, things are harder when they are imperfectly boiled than when they are boiled, and the moisture in them more distinct from the solid parts. So much for the definition and causes of boiling and imperfect boiling. Broiling is concoction by dry foreign heat. Hence, if a man were to boil a thing, but the change and concoction in it were due, not to the heat of the liquid, but to that of the fire, the thing will have been broiled and not boiled when the process has been carried to completion. If the process has gone too far, we use the word scorched to describe it. If the process leaves the thing drier at the end, the agent has been dry heat. Hence, the outside is drier than the inside, the opposite being true of things boiled. Where the process is artificial, broiling is more difficult than boiling, for it is difficult to heat the inside and the outside uniformly, since the parts nearer to the fire are the first to get dry and consequently get more intensely dry. In this way, the outer pores contract and the moisture in the thing cannot be secreted, but is shut in by the closing of the pores. Now, broiling and boiling are artificial processes, but the same general kind of thing, as we said, is found in nature too. The affections produced are similar though they lack a name, for art imitates nature. For instance, the concoction of food in the body is like boiling, for it takes place in a hot and moist medium, and the agent is the heat of the body. So too, certain forms of indigestion are like imperfect boiling. And it is not true that animals are generated in the concoction of food, as some say. Really, they are generated in the excretion which putrefies in the lower belly, and they ascend afterwards. For concoction goes on in the upper belly, but the excretion putrefies in the lower. The reason for this has been explained elsewhere. We have seen that the opposite of boiling is imperfect boiling. Now there is something correspondingly opposed to the species of concoction called broiling, but it is more difficult to find a name for it. It would be the kind of thing that would happen if there were imperfect broiling instead of broiling proper through lack of heat due to deficiency in the external fire or to the quantity of water in the thing undergoing the process. For then we should get too much heat for no effect to be produced, but too little for concoction to take place. We have now explained concoction and inconcoction, ripening and rawness, boiling and broiling, and their opposites.